D Lo for for boxing. Alright, man. So uh the Errol Spence Jr. versus Terry Crawford fight. You know, a lot more stuff coming out in the in the media. And you know what I'm saying? You got <laughs> y'all y'all know I try to stay away from the contract talks and all of that stuff. But let me say this before I get started. I made videos for years emphasizing when it comes that when it comes to negotiations, when it comes to boxing contracts, there is a lot more to be negotiated than what a than a purse split. And, and I put emphasis on that, saying that the other stuff has to be agreed to as well. Because if you can get some of the other things you want when you're um, negotiating a contract, you will relax your demands on other things. So be it. Okay, fighter A wants a uh, 50% split. Fighter B is saying, no, I got to get the line share. And fighter A says, okay, I'll give you the line share. I'll give you 60-40 if we fight in my state. And fighter B says, okay, hey, you just bought a home fight. No problem. You know what I'm saying? And then they negotiate all the other things. So, there's a lot to be put that goes into negotiations and and it's in in boxing and sports all of that stuff is all it's all relative right and the same thing when you when you're dealing with in business when you when you're making a negotiating a deal it's not just about the monetary terms it's also about other forms of compensation it's also about flow of product things like that what happens in the event that this happens what happens in the event that that happens? All of that stuff goes into contracts. So it's not it's not as cut and dry as a lot of people think when they just say a fighter should just go out there and sign the contract. Um, Oh, you just want this amount of money, then go out there and get it. That's it. There's a lot more to be negotiated. And in boxing, it's weird because some things don't even really have monetary value, but they're negotiating a contract such as who walks out first, whose name's on the banner first. You know what I'm saying? There, There is a way that it traditionally is done. And there's a way that it's done at times. So I'm saying all of that to say this. With all the talks coming out, I, I, I just, I've been at work. So I kind of catching YouTube here and there. I've been a hell of a day. So I've been super busy. I have time to listen to a lot of stuff. But what I've been catching, I go, I go to one channel. I'm hearing... You know, a, a snippet from a report that, you know, the issue, the holdup is that Terrence Crawford has agreed to 35 percent back end money with no guarantee. But his side is wanting transparency on seeing what the back end money actually is so that they know that they're getting 35 percent of the true revenue. You know what I'm saying? The true net revenue. Not just thirty five percent of a number that they're be, they're being told the fight actually done. I um in business, <laughs> you, that's the way it goes. You 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 can't you you can't agree to a percentage of something if you can't see the total. You know what I'm saying? So I understand that. All right. Now I don't even know if there's any truth to this. I'm just saying this is what's out there. And in the same token, there's another argument going on that. Terrence Crawford is the only one wanting a rematch. Although we've been hearing two-sided rematch since almost the beginning of talks on this fight and everybody was excited about it. You know, I can say everybody, but a lot of people were like, hey, we get to see this fight twice. Man, that's amazing, blah, 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 blah. If it ends up going, being a split, we'll get to see it three times or whatever, you know. It, nobody was complaining about that. But now that it's coming out that Crawford is the only, now I don't know if there's any truth to this. This is just what's out there. That Crawford is, you know, wanting a rematch. And Errol Spence is saying he's one and done at welterweight. And he don't want a rematch. You know, he don't, he don't, he's not even asking for a rematch if he loses. So now that's an issue in some kind of way in admission that Terrence Crawford doesn't have confidence that he's going to win the fight. So he's holding up negotiation once again. And like I said, that may not be any truth to any of this. This is just what's out there. But the way I look at that as well is that if a fighter, if fighter A is conceding per split, he's not getting a guarantee. 
He's not getting this. He's not getting that. And he's asking for a rematch in, in return. I feel like he bought his rematch. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he paid for his rematch by conceding all these other things. But at the end of the day, you're worth, you're worth what you can negotiate. If you can't negotiate that, then you're not worth it. You know what I'm saying? You're not worth it to the people putting on the event. I'm not saying you're not worth it. My, I'm not saying I don't value a person as being worth something because they can't negotiate it, but I'm not the one paying them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the one putting the paperwork together. So to me, no matter who it is, you're worth what you can negotiate. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the way it is. So I don't know how this is all going to iron out, if it's going to iron out or whatever's going to happen. But I can tell you this. The one thing that every conversation I'm hearing is missing is that Errol Smith Jr., while he said he's one and done at welterweight, he also said he wants to be undisputed at welterweight. And from my vantage point, maybe I'm looking at it wrong. Maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm retarded. But it looks like the only way to get that undisputed at welterweight is to fight that guy that has the WBO title to be undisputed. Um, we, we In boxing, they don't give out de facto undisputed and say, well, you were going to fight the guy and you were going to beat him. So we're just going to go ahead and give it to you. It doesn't work that way. You got to go in there and get it in the ring. And whatever's holding up this fight, I feel like Errol Smith Jr. has a lot to gain if he can go in there and beat Terrence Crawford. It's not just about undisputed. This fight was big before it was undisputed. Terrence Crawford has been a mainstay atop the pound for pound list universally for probably the better part of the last five years. He's been one of the top guys, even, ever, ever, even before Ward retired. Okay, there there is something that is said with going out there beating a top pound for pound guy. All right, Errol Smith Jr. has a chance to put his name in the record books as a four belt undisputed champion and add his name to the very short list of guys who have been able to accomplish that. Um, that's that's what he has to gain. Now, am I saying he should concede everything he wants and demands? To make that happen, absolutely not. That's why they negotiate. Terrence Crawford says he wants to be undisputed at 147 pounds to go with having been undisputed at 140. Um, <laughs> it's to the point now that there's only one man with belts other than himself. And if he can't make this fight happen, guess what? Terrence Crawford don't have a shot in the dark at becoming undisputed at 147 pounds because if Errol Smith Jr. leaves the division, those belts are going to be fragmented. It's going to be three vacant belts out there. And, you know, you'll have to go around. By the time they have round robins or whatever to determine who's going to get the belts, man, it'll be so far removed from Terrence Crawford having an opportunity to fight for undisputed. He may as well follow Errol Smith up to 154. You know, um, if undisputed is his goal. All right. Also, Errol Smith Jr. is considered widely by many, I'd say universally, as a top five, top three, top two pound for pound fighter, depending on whose list you're looking at. Definitely, I see him no less than five, top five everywhere. So there's no other top five fighter that is within range for uh, Terrence Crawford to fight. There is no other top five pound for pound fighter that he has fought. So getting an opportunity to fight Errol Spence has a lot of value for him as well. Um, I know he's, he's probably closer to the end of his career than Errol Spence Jr. Um, just based off of him being older. Um, but there's still, there's still things to be gained if he can go out there and beat Errol Spence Jr. And, and that does a lot for his career. Um, I'm not going to, I look at it like this. Both of these guys need each other and neither one of them need the other. It just, it's all about what exactly it is you're looking for. What exactly it is they're trying to gain. But I can tell you this, if either one of them right now at this moment want to become undisputed at 147 pounds, take everything else away. The only way to do that is to fight each other. And if they want to become undisputed in their next fight, they got to fight each other. 
And that's just all it is to it. So it's up to them to work it out behind the scenes and figure out what they got to do to make it work. Um, you know what I'm saying? And regardless of everything that's come out about, because every time you turn around, there's something different about the fight being closer. It's made. It's going to be announced any day. This day and the other. I mean, like I said, all of this stuff could be just, just talk that's out there. I'm not saying any of it's 100% valid, but I will say that the things that I said that I feel about both guys and about the fight and about what's to be gained by fighting another guy, I feel like it's 100% valid. I don't feel like that's just my opinion. I feel like it's based and rooted in fact, based on what these guys have said they want, based on where these guys stack up in the sport of boxing amongst their contemporaries. So as a fight fan, it's frustrating to me for us to to, to hear anything um, counter counterproductive or counterintuitive to this fight getting made and, and getting delivered, signed, sealed, and delivered. But that's all I got on it because y'all know I'm not I'm not about that blame game. I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and and, and ride hard and say it's Errol Spence Jr. I'm not gonna sit here and ride hard and say oh Terrence Crawford's the issue. All I'm saying is whatever the issues are, I think boxing needs for them to get this ironed out because fans aren't going to just keep tuning in just because we like fighters. You know what I'm saying? We got to get the fights that we want to see at some point. There's other sports and shit out there. You know what I'm saying? And, and there's a lot of up and coming guys that are in positions where they have to fight the guys put in front of them. And they're going to they're gonna get more of my attention and less of this, uh, you know, this, this stuff that you know, this drama and, and these diva stuff that goes on seem like every time there's a big fight to get made. That's all I got on it. D-Lo 404 Boxing, like, share, comment, subscribe. No, I don't do videos this long usually, so if you're home with me to the end of the video, hey, let me know you heard it, heard the ending. I appreciate it. Um, You know, I'll catch y'all on another one. I'm out. Peace.